In this tutorial series, you will learn all there is to creating your first animatable character. It's a beginner series where we will discuss all the details you need to know for rigging and skinning. And later, in the next series, we will be even animating. Yes, by the end of watching this whole series, you will animate these two animations by yourself from scratch, on a completely new character you have rigged yourself. You might think you are not able to do that, but you are. Needless to say, you will learn a lot by watching this. This is the biggest project I have done here on YouTube so far, so I hope you will like it and that it will help as many people as possible. Now let's get started. Hey fellow animators, I am Ilochte. So, if you have seen at least one video on this YouTube channel, you know that I do tutorials for 3ds Max CAD animation system. And that is also what we will be using in this series. If you don't know what CAD or Character Animation Toolkit is, you can watch this video for a brief overview. It's an animation system like Biped or Human IK or any general bone systems. It's a package of features that help you rig and animate. There is a lot to cover here in this series, but I promise you, you will learn a lot. Many people ask me for a beginner's tutorial and I have also realized that I need something like the Dona tutorial Andrew the Blender Guru has to introduce more people into animation. However, I have to say that this journey will not be easy. Animation is a very complex topic that many people fail to get into because they start to feel completely overwhelmed at some point. Even many experienced 3D artists fail to learn rigging or animation, because to get to animation you usually have to go through a lot of steps first. You need to know at least something about 3D softwares and get through some 3D modeling, texturing, rendering and all that stuff, which by itself is enormous amount of knowledge. And when that is done, you have to do it all over again for rigging and animation. Right which is basically a completely different profession altogether. But don't worry, I will try to get you through all of those initial obstacles. So keep pictures like this in mind, get some motivational drinks or drugs or whatever suits you and let's begin. Let's fight your frustration, your demotivation, your procrastination, your bad food habits and everything else. Frafroda. <laughs> well, okay, now, you should already be familiar with several things here in 3ds Max. As I have mentioned before, rigging and animation is a huge topic by itself and it's not possible to get you through everything leading to that in a series like this. That's why you should already know your way around 3ds Max at least a little bit. You should understand basic stuff like what is a viewport, how to navigate in 3D space, how to create a cube and simple stuff, how to move things and so on. I will not be explaining any of the modeling principles, texturing or how to start with 3D graphics. I would not be good for that anyway, I am an animator after all. For this whole series we will be using this character, Cooper. To start, download Cooper on my website, so you can follow exactly what I am doing during all of these tutorial videos. Cooper is free for everybody to use, like all the other stuff I share with you. The model was originally created by Peter Kabi and later modified by me for the needs of this tutorial series. However, without his first model and UVs, I and also you would not be able to have this character, so a lot of thanks goes to him. You can see more of his stuff on his ArtStation page. Maybe you yourself have even finished characters like this or several other 3D projects before already and that is a great starting point for this series. Ok, so here we go. Cooper is now just a static mesh, a static 3D model. You are not able to animate him beside the basic translation, rotation and scale. Meaning you cannot actually deform the mesh, like bend his arms for example. To be able to do that, you need to create a bone structure for him. Bone objects together with all the controllers to move and rotate them are called rigs in the whole animation industry. In 3ds Max by default, you have three options when it comes to creating rigs. You can use regular 3ds Max bones located under the create panel and systems. You can also use biped located in the same place. Or you can use cat located under helpers and cat objects. All of these three systems are different and come with different sets of features and limitations. Which one to use and how we got to this point where we have free animation systems in one software is a topic for a longer discussion. But as I have mentioned in the beginning, my whole YouTube channel focuses on tutorials for CAD animation system. And it's also the one we will be using. Let's start the rigging then. The whole character consists of several separated meshes. The body, the shirt, pants, shoes and the hair. This doesn't have to be the case. If you know the character is for a game for example and it will never appear without a shirt and pants, you can have everything in one mesh, no problem. You wouldn't even have to have the parts of the mesh under the clothes modeled at all. It basically depends just on your needs. Cooper is more of a general character and is being shared on the internet, so I wanted him to be as versatile as possible. Now if somebody would like to replace the shirt or hair for example, it would be pretty easy for him to do. At the moment we will not need the clothes parts of the character because we will focus just on the body. So let's hide them. 
For that I use Scene Explorer, this button here. I use Scene Explorer a lot and I like to keep the max file organized here. So let's hide what we don't need, maybe hide even mouth, so it gets out of the way. Let's keep the body and hair for now. He's now naked and not safe for work, but we don't mind. Now let's start building the skeleton. Helpers, cat objects and cat parent. Here you have several parameters and I discuss them in more detail in this video. But for this we basically don't need anything. There is a list of presets here which you can use if they suit you. There is even a base human preset here, but I personally never use them and I built all my rigs from scratch rather than modify the existing ones. That's what we will do here also. So select none and click and drag inside the scene. It will create an empty cat parent triangle for you. The first thing you will always do now is to zero out its position. That's easily done by right clicking on all the axes. Also you should have your mesh zeroed out and be exactly in the middle of the scene. The scale also at 100%, that's important. You always want to keep your scene clean. So with empty cat rig, select the triangle and switch to modify panel, the second one. Here we have the same parameters we had before and now we have to click on create pelvis which will create our very first bone, with a random color, which you can of course change. But you can see its position is wrong, we would want it to be somewhere here. For setting the general height position of the pelvis, use cat units ratio parameter of cat parent triangle, which is a global scale of the whole rig. I do it like this because I want this number to represent the scale of a character. If I had multiple characters in a scene, I want this number to be representing their sizes. So let's see, when you select the bone, you can see where its pivot is. This is the bone's point of rotation. By the way, during these videos I will be switching a lot between different viewport views, perspective front, left, sometimes top. I will not be mentioning it anymore, but hopefully you will not get lost in all the switching. So pivot of bones is basically the most important thing you pay attention to when rigging. Pivots always have to be placed correctly. Now I have realized the pelvis should be a bit higher up. So now, this is its point of rotation, which looks proper. We don't want it too low. We would also like to see through the bone, so it won't get in the way. You could use see-through setting for it, but I don't like it personally. I always use display as box, which you can find in the display panel, the fifth one. Because with display as box, the bone is completely hollow and I just like it like this a lot more. We can also rename the bone right away, so back to modify panel and change the name parameter. Usually in 3ds Max you change the name up here, but for cat objects changing the name is done here. After you refresh the object by deselecting and selecting it again, you can see that the name is put together by the name of cat parent and a name of the bone. If we now rename the cat parent to Cooper Rick for example, all the bones will have that prefix. Let's also change the color while we are at it. And it's the same thing, for cat objects, change the colors here. Ok, but if we look from the side, the bone is placed too far to the front. Always check the bones from all the angles. So let's move it back. And we can also change the dimensions of the bone, so it represents something what we would like the pelvis to be. Ok, now let's continue by creating a spine. Click on add spine and default spine will appear. It of course needs a lot of editing, so select one of its bones. Oh right, we can actually freeze the mesh so we will not be selecting it by accident all the time. I also usually disable show frozen in grey to keep the texture visible, just because it is nicer to look at. So when you select any of the spine bones, you can edit its parameters. That will be the case for all the bones of CAD animation system. Each bone has its own settings in the modify panel. So let's change the number of bones to 2. 2 will be enough for most of the humanoid spines. And now we need to position it properly. I am used to doing it like this. I first place the bottom spine bone, somewhere just above the pelvis, like this. Now for the chest it is a bit strange. It usually needs to be much lower than you think. Because you should not pay attention to the dimensions of the bone right now, you should only pay attention to its pivot. All the spine bones have the pivot at the bottom and I want the same thing for the chest as well. That means I am placing the chest bones just by looking at the pivot point and this line here. 
so now this whole upper part will be the chest. But now the actual shape of the bone doesn't represent what we want it to look like. We need to change its shape. And that we will do by adding an edit poly modifier to it. You probably already know how the modifier stack works at this point, because it's the same in the whole 3ds Max, not just get objects. You can apply any number of modifiers to objects and in this case edit poly allows us to edit the shape of the bone to whatever we want, same as with regular polygonal modeling. In this case however we just want to change the dimensions. The important part here is that by changing this the pivot, the point of rotation, stays where it was before the editing. When done we can collapse the modifier stack just to clean it up. While we are here we can also quickly change the name and color. And let's continue by changing the dimensions of the spine bones. Here changing just by the parameters is fine because their pivot points are in the places where we want them to be, so no need for edit poly modifier. I always do the bones a bit bigger than the mesh so they are easily selectable when animating. I personally don't use any helper gizmos to control the bones like you usually see in different rigs. I select them directly because the shape of cat bones make it quite easy to do. Now check it from the side. The bottom one is quite ok, but we need to move the middle one further to the front. But also the chest to the front. So start with chest and then continue lower. Maybe even the bottom one could be moved to the front more. It may not seem all that important, but placing pivots properly is basically the most important thing for creating good rigs. Keep that in mind all the time. So the spine is ready, let's continue with the legs. But before we do that, I want to mention that this series is sponsored by you, the viewer. No, I don't have any sponsors. These videos are only possible because of your support and support from my Patreons. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting the channel. I live in a country where even a few dollars have a real value, so I am grateful for any kind of support. And even sharing the video might sometimes have bigger value than a few dollars, so I would be very grateful even for those few clicks. And it's also free, because who has money to send out after this crazy year anyway, right? And one last thing, I also give out all the stuff I use in my videos for everybody to use for free. You can find a lot of useful stuff to download on my website. If that is something you are interested in, be sure to check that out. Thank you all. Ok, where were we? Click on pelvis and add a leg to it. It will create a default leg. A default leg means it has two bones and ankle. And also an IK platform. Let's change the color right away, so you can see it a bit better. I will use blue here as is usually the convention. Blue color for all the left side bones and green color for all the right side bones. You can use whatever you want, but I do it this way. So two bones and ankle is fine for us, but we also need one bone for toes. If your character has a humanoid leg like this, you should always use a bone for toes to be able to properly bend the feet while walking for example. Actually, you should always model a character with this in mind that it should have an ability to bend its toes like a human. Because it adds a lot of believability to the animation overall and it's also quite quick to do. Number of digits is the parameter we need for this. And one bone is enough here. We need just one finger bone that will affect all the toes. Even the mesh doesn't have the toes modeled, so no point to have more than one. However, it has created a two bone finger by default, so we just need to change it to one. That's all we need here. Set display as box to get the bones out of the way and let's start setting up the leg. First thing to do when you are positioning a leg is to set its IK platform, because that affects all the bones in the leg. Resize it. And we can also rotate it a bit to match the foot. Let's also hide the cat parent triangle here because it will just get in the way and we don't need it for now. If you are wondering why are the feet seemingly in the air, because ideally they shouldn't be. However, don't forget we also have shoes in this model and when we unhide those, the shoes are actually on the ground, so the body is positioned a bit higher. All is good. When the platform is placed, the next thing to do is to set up the ankle. Alright, one thing to mention here. I have keyboard shortcut set up for changing the coordinate systems between view and local. You can see I can change between them very quickly. You will be switching coordinate systems a lot, like really a lot, especially when animating. So you should also set some shortcuts for that. I wouldn't even say it's a recommendation, it's a necessity to have. So do it. It's done in a top customize menu and hotkey editor. If you are wondering, I have them set to shift plus Q and shift plus W. 
Ok, so let's go back to the right viewport and position the bone. Move it up a bit, rotate, move again. Now I am looking at the connection between the ankle and toes. Something like this should be ok. Now change the length of the ankle to the size where you want the pivot to be. It will maybe need to be further back, maybe not, we will see. Now the toes. They are placed pretty alright. Somewhere around these edges. And we should also think about the shoes and check if this could work. But it should be fine. It should bend somewhere here, which is alright. So the foot is basically done. We can now just resize the bones to make them a bit larger for easier selection. And now move all the way to the top of the leg. The reason for it is, like I have said, if we started from the top and finally got to the platform last at the bottom, it would affect everything we have said before and we would have to reposition everything again. Also, for example, changing the length of the ankle affects the knee. But now, after the foot is done, we can safely do the rest. You can see the upper bones don't affect the bones below ankle at all. Ok, so let's move these both bones a bit inwards. And also, we don't want the thigh to be too far up, because it would affect the large portion of the pelvis area and we don't want that. Move it a bit lower, but also not too low. These are the things you will get better at with practice. Just keep in mind that proper placement will go a long way in the final result. Now the knee. The knee should always be bent a little. The bones need to have a little angle between them, because of the IK. The IK has to know which way it should bend the leg. Also, it's a good idea to avoid bends this way, because it will also create problems with bending the knee. Ok, so always keep at least some angle here. Never do it like this with near 180 degrees. Because then the IK wouldn't know if to bend to this side or this side. So place the pivot point as much to the front as it makes sense. And we can also straighten it up here. Now the pivot point is not in the middle. But here we are in a bit of a luck, because the knee really only bends one way and doesn't have many degrees of freedom. So we will be fine. Why do I have this here open the whole time by the way? Test out how the knee bends by moving the platform. It should be similar to this. Mostly only in this one axis. Ok, it looks great. Let's finish the leg by resizing the bones. Maybe even a bit bigger. And now when one leg is done, we can add another to pelvis and it will create the exact mirror copy of it by default. Which is awesome and saves a ton of work. I am also changing the color to green because that's the convention I use. I always keep left bones blue and right ones green. Also you should know, if you would now have to change one leg, you don't have to delete the other one and recreate it just to have it mirrored. You can use these buttons here, copy limp settings and paste as mirrored to the other leg. You can see it mirrors without any problem. You will use these buttons a lot by the way, they are very useful. The last thing I change here is the name from L leg to leg L. Because when everything is sorted alphabetically, I want legs to be together and not get mixed with L arm for example. It makes more sense to me. It will of course rename all the leg bones now. And other than that, I keep the leg bone names as they are by default. We will finish the video here. This is what we have so far. Next we will continue with rigging the head and arms and later move to skinny. So let's not waste any more time and start up part 2 of the series. I am Miloš Černý and thank you for watching.